process in the data again with the addition of uncertainties for the angle. Okay, we're not going to worry so much about the headings. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to be quick and lazy. We're going to use this so I can just copy paste my headings. Da, 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 da. Okay. Ah, theta. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, I'll I'll tell you now because you have a bit of time. You guys have to go to um, edit special characters. Theta. Yeah, there's different ways. You get theta, and then we can actually do. I think I think I've got my favorites here. I have it in my favorites. But what I actually do, because I have special moves, I type T T H E T A. Boom, theta. Okay. So we're going to do this in a few different steps. Okay. First thing is we're just going to process our data. So you have your own data. Alana, you can use Kevin's from yep. last class. I always use, use your own. So also load up Logger Pro. And we'll copy and paste. And trying to copy and paste such a tall table, I think it's useful to zoom out of the table. And it's easier to drag down if you zoom out of the table. That's my own feelings. Or you can like drag down, down, down for a long time. But if you zoom out, I think it's a lot easier. Okay. And you'll copy and paste it in. Oops, see what's up in here. Good. And again, we'll label our X and our Y. X was angle. And here we can actually do it properly now. Logger Pro actually has the Greek stuff built in for us because they know it's difficult. Okay. Again, always look at your neighbor's screen too. Do your own, look at your neighbor. Do your own, look at your neighbor. Help your neighbor if necessary. Please put that power bar down. It kind of bothers me, unless you need it there, but no, you don't. Okay. And Y was intensity, intensity, I, and we'll call that LX. Okay. And again, we'll give this a title because we got time today. Um, angle versus, and just say so you know, this is the way I use. I'm going to do it the way Mr. Mello likes to do it. Mr. Mello is starting to convert me over. Just so you know, and we got this on record now. In a pause, but I think it's a better way. Um, what would you say? Um, I don't know, actually, I'll just say angle versus intensity. No, sorry, Mr. Mello. <laughs> ah, no, the effect of... It's basically, it should be the aim repeated. The effect of angle of... I know we haven't... I haven't introduced the word deviation. Angle of deviation... Um versus intensity for two polarizing filters. So we want we want the title to be giving very descriptive. Because you should just receive the graph in a title and know what's about without having to read the method, without having to read anything else. You should just look at the graph and say, okay, that's what that graph's about. Okay. That's done. This would be a grade 10 graph, okay? But you guys are grade 11 DP students, so what's missing from this graph? Uncertainties. Uncertainties. 
So let's go to the angle. And some people chose either basically one or two degrees. So you double click up here in angle. Options. Error bar calculations. And we're going to choose a constant of two degrees, I think. And it gives us that. Also, last time we had the column of plus or minus 3%. And we could find 3% of this. But let's just see how smart Logger Pro is. Logger Pro can do 3%. It's smart enough. So error bar calculations. Instead of fixed value, we're going to choose percent. And now it changes the error constant to percent. And in the instructions that come with those uh, light sensors, one of them, I don't know about both of them, but at least one of them says 3%. Why? Because I looked it up like three years ago. Okay. So we're going to put 3%. And we get that. Now I've got these little circles. Do I need those point protectors anymore in DP? No. So we double click the graph. And we turn off point symbols. They change the word a little bit. You see point protectors. They change the words. And this bar graph, well, we'll never click that. Okay. One thing that we didn't do in class, we actually didn't draw the line of best fit. We just started straightening it. Let's actually draw the line of best fit now. So we're going to click on the curvy guy. And we had the conversation. There's even a cosine squared. Do you guys have cone squared square, or, or did I invent that? Do you guys have it? I might have added it myself. You have that too? Well, scroll down, and you'll find it. Ooh. Let's see how that looks. No? Well, it covers basically a whole point itself. Okay, but I'm thinking maybe because I didn't have any points selected. I'm going to try again. It's not really making me feel too happy here, to tell you the truth. Does anybody else have a nice line? Does sign give it to you? Let's go back to automatic. So sine does it, but cosine squared doesn't. That's pretty ironic, isn't it? Especially because we know that the answer is cosine squared. But we, we need to get a line that works for us. Does that line work? Yeah. So if we we're doing a lab report, we would copy. Let's, let's do it. Why not? Let's just kind of press it a little bit. We'll open our pages document. And we paste that in. And we'd write a little something. Again, I didn't want to write a lot here because I want to get to the meat. Can you just copy and paste it? Yes, and that's what you should do. Also, it's very important. And that's very important. But look in the lower left down here. Look at my lower left. It has these numbers. You ever see these little numbers on there? That's kind of annoying to me. Because basically it's the x and y coordinates. But if you're off the screen, oops. If you're off, if you're not, if your mouse isn't on there, then they go away. So I would copy and paste when they're not there, because I don't like those little numbers being there. That's just me. Some other people are like me too. Who's like me? Who likes those numbers there? Doesn't, doesn't, yeah. doesn't bother you? Okay. Emma, does it bother you at all? No, Alana, does it bother you? No. no. I don't really care. About it would bother Pratchy, I know that. There's some great nines that really bother. I hate, in the new page that you can, like, um, like, pinch the picture and turn it with the fingers. It's like, yeah. oh, I don't know how to turn it anymore. What do you need to turn? Like, for, for example, I noticed that when I have these are pictures, uh, it's like, if I zoom in, yeah. the picture used to get bigger and smaller. Yeah. Now, like, the entire thing gets bigger. We just you just click and you just go like this and you just drag it smaller or bigger. 
Yeah, I know, but I can't, like, if I want to turn it to the top. Ah. Okay, no, hold down option and go to the side corner. See how my little cursor changes? Yeah. It changes to a little cur guy like this. Then you could change it, but I'm not changing mine. See? Oh, your new pages. <clears throat> okay, so we would write down, and we would write down the graph appears to be a what kind of graph is this one okay no we used a sine graph on it but we had the discussion is this a sine or cosine graph why is it a cosine because it starts it starts up there that's right that's exactly the answer this appears to be a cosine graph because no, at zero degrees, the value is a maximum, right? Because you would say cosine of zero is one, right? That being the maximum. So when you're writing your lab report, it should be a story. Some people write a great story. Other people just assume that you know everything and just go chunk, chunk, chunk. They just put a new table there and they'll tell you why. So we say, this appears to be a cosine graph, okay? Um, the graph will be linearized, that means straightened, right? By graphing intensity versus what? How can we straighten a cosine graph? By cos of the angle. Cos, oops, that's my right, theta, theta, boom, okay, theta, you can copy and paste your theta from your table, if not, don't worry about it, so we're going to graph by, linear. so now we would have a new table with this data processing, does that make sense? So we're telling the story, some people, they forget about the story, they just say, okay, I'm going to put a cos theta table. But you're saying why? So then we'd have table two. Okay, let's see what table two is going to be. It's going to be cosine um, theta. So you copy and paste it <coughs> from your earlier one. If you don't have an earlier one, you go to in insert special characters or an alternative one. You went to the internet and copied and pasted it, right? Wikipedia. Go to Wikipedia. Copy and paste from Wikipedia. No, I used it in like a pro because you can choose. Yeah. Them. Can you copy and paste from oh. Logger Pro? I wonder. Yeah. I just did so at the time. Let's see. Boom! Awesome. Okay. Does cosine have any units? Well, the angle has degrees, but cosine is a number. There's no unit there. Now, it still should be uncertainty in cosine theta. Equals, ooh, this is we didn't, this is so you know we didn't do this. I said that we weren't doing it because it wasn't worth our time, because that wasn't the main meat of that last lesson. We have a bit more time today. Delta, no, delta is one you guys should know. Tell them how to do delta. Option J. Option J. That's one to know because they use it all the time and it's easy. Cosine theta equals, and you know what it's going to be? Next column. It's going to be over here because we don't know how to do it yet. I'll, I'll explain why. Just trust me on that, okay? We'll come back to that. First thing though, let's just do our cos theta. So it's going to be equals, and who remembers how to do this? Oh, cos, cos radian, bracket, bracket radians, because the computer works in radians. So now what this computer does is going to change zero degrees into radians, then it'll do the cos of it. And we get one, and that's what we should get. Um, let's drag it down, and then we'll talk about the decimals afterwards. 
most of the answers are like two, pretty much two or three significant figures, right? So maybe we'll change this like to two or three. And maybe when these ones are three, that could have three, but we're not going to worry about that. So let's go to the inspector, change your decimal places. Pretty much two new figures. Yeah, I know those have three, but that's life, okay? Now, actually, let's just process this, okay? So now we're going to go back to Logger Pro. You're going to make the graph smaller. Make it really small, please trust me. Even drag it up something like this. Make your table a bit bigger. And I need to get a new column. How do I get a new column? Data, new manual column. And we'll call this COS. Um, oh, I'll just do it Atlanta's way. Uh, where's our Greek? Lower, theta. So it's going to be COS theta. And the short name will be COS theta. It can't be too much shorter than that. And it has no units. Okay, and now we'll copy, I'm going to zoom out so it's easier for me to copy and paste all these guys. Copy and paste that. No, we don't make the graph bigger. We're going to get a new graph. Because maybe you change a number later and maybe that would change this first graph or you do something. All right, so let, let's keep let's keep all the graphs there. We could just easily make new ones, but let's have a new graph. How do I get a new graph? Louder, and bang. Insert graph. Okay. Do I want cos of theta versus the angle though? That's what it gave me. Is that what I actually want? Yeah. So I want you guys to think about how, what you want. Which graph do you guys want right now? If you're not sure, look back at the sentence. What do we say there? Intensity versus cos of theta. So how do we get that? Oh, we change it on the, on the axis. Yeah, change on the axis. So this one will be? Intensity, that's what we had before, and this one will be cos of theta. Ooh, that's yucky. Auto scale it. That's better. Okay. Now there's one thing. Look, we have air bars right now in cos theta. But did we actually make air bars for cos theta? But I've got them. It was still using 3% because it thinks it's actually trials. It, think, think, it thinks this is the X and it thinks it's trial 1, trial 2, trial 3. That's what it thinks. Do we want 3% though? No, that's a mistake. So we have to turn these off because that's not real. And again, because we have some time, we could move to the next step like we did last class. But we have a bit of time, and I want to use this time right now, okay? So is everybody here okay? Okay. I actually want uncertainties in cos theta. So now the question is, how do we do uncertainties when it's cos? Hmm. Let's go back to our our uh, number spreadsheets okay there's no 
you know, we normally have a rule, so we say it's like it's 2x, if it's like t squared, we do, we add things, right? There's no rule for this, but in some ways it's actually easier. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say max of cos theta, and here I'm going to have min cos theta, and my font is different, I got no idea why. Ah, I don't like it. Oh, okay, that's better. Okay. So here's a little trick that you guys can do. Instead, because remember this angle. Let's not. The zero is not a good example. We're going to skip down to number five. Okay. Five could be as low as. What could this 5 degrees be as low as? Three. 3. Or it could be as high as? 7. You guys agree with that? So maybe the cosine here really isn't 1. It could be a bit higher, a bit lower. So watch this. The maximum for so cos max, maybe it's cos max theta. It might be a better way of writing it. Cos of max theta. Yeah, this is better. Sorry guys, but we're learning as we go. Min theta. Any guesses? I'm gonna do I'm gonna do in the five one. Any guesses what I'm going to do? Uh instead of five if instead of the um, angle it would be plus two. Like the angle plus two. Ah yeah. Do I have to type that in by hand every time? So I go cos, then I want you guys to give it a shot. I want you to type in what you think I want. Because somehow we want to get a 7 there. And the other one we want to be a 3. How can we get that in a formula where it does it all nice and we just do like a fill down? How can we make that be a 7, the other one by 3? How can we make the next one be 8 and 12? So it'll be cos, radians, then what's it going to be? Anyone help me out? Yeah. I Five. click. Yeah, this one, this one. Yeah. Plus two. Plus two. Bracket, bracket. Bracket, bracket. Boom. How about this one? Same thing, but minus, Same thing, but minus two. Yeah, make sure you, yeah, make sure you put in the radians. It's going to be so equals. Like you type in. Brackets, radians, oops, and then open brackets. Then I'm going to click on this guy, and instead of just normal that guy, in this case, I'm going to say minus two. Instead of just being that guy, five, it's actually going to be five minus two. Would you plus two that since it's the max? No, this was ma I'm doing the next. I'm doing the minimum now. Oh, okay. So I did the max. Now I'm doing the minimum. Now here's the beauty, if you do two things at once, you can actually fill down both of them at the same time. So just filling out all of one and all of the other one, you can fill down both. And then I'm going to fill up. That zero kind of bothered me, so I wanted to... Um, I wanted you on a number that made more sense. Yeah. Why are you using the numbers? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's the obvious question, isn't it, Alana? Especially when you got a teacher like me that keeps saying how bad it is. Right? But that's okay. Okay. So we can't see too much of a big change for these guys, but here, it said it should be 94. It could be 93 or 95. Here it makes a bigger one. It should be 77. Maybe it's as low as 74. Maybe it's as high as 79. This one is 57. It could be 54 or 60. 
Does that make sense? So this is the lowest it could be. This is the highest it could be. How could we actually find the uncertainty for cos theta then? Max minus min divided by 2. So uncertainty in cos theta. So it'll be equals. And again, I want you guys to do it. I'm, I'll be quiet now. See if you match my numbers exactly. Does anyone have negatives and I have positives? Yeah. Yeah. Why are they negatives to start with? I have positives. Because even though this one said max, it actually gave me a a smaller number. So I chose this one minus that one. I made that choice. Well, the minimum theta gave me the maximum cos. So I looked at these numbers and I said, well, the, the biggest number here. And again, I'll control my decimal places. to 2. So it kind of basically matches the data. So this is what we did not do the other day in class. We did not do this step. Yeah, check your neighbor's computer. Yeah, make sure you need brackets for max and min. Are we okay to move forwards? Jonas, are we okay to move forwards? Okay. So this part we did not do with um, the other day because it wasn't worth our time, but today we have the time. So now, what do I want to do with this number? Um, use it as the uncertainty in the graph. Yeah, how do I use that for uncertainty in the graph? Don't say it, do it. There's different numbers. You have different numbers than me? No, like in the one, the, the, Yeah, because some are closer and some are farther apart, right? 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03s. So the uncertainty, depending on how closer away you are, it changes. That's just the way the cosine works. So how can we get this uncertain? Yeah, how can we get different numbers in Logger Pro? Because it it just wants it just wants us to put one number in here. But is there a different way? Oh, we need to use a. I need a new column. Thank you, Pevin. Data new manual column. And I will call this uncertainty cos theta. Uncertainty cos theta. And again, I will copy and paste these numbers here. You know, it's the uncertainty of the cosine of the angle. Well, I think this fits. Uncertainty cos theta. It really can't be short. Or you can just say uncertainty angle or AC theta or something. That works. I put the column, but they haven't magically appeared. No. Kevin already told me, so I need Ambeg to tell me now. How do I get we we copied we pasted the uncertainty here, but it didn't magically go to graph. How I want these little 
error bars here, but they're not there. Click on double click and close theta, yeah. Okay, you're watching Jonas. Error bar calculations. Use column and uncertainty cos theta. And you have to make it fix the hardware as well, which is the percentage. Oh. Oh, yeah, that could make a difference because it might it might think it's a percent of that. It could be. It doesn't make it. I'm curious. I don't well, know. It says, it says error on my. It just warns me that it's um, percentage. That might be. Oh. Is this a straight line from here? It's all material. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, you must have one certainty that's too big. Okay, well, this, um, bring it up here, okay? Bring it up here. Um, this, uh, our data, so I, um, well, I didn't use the data anymore, so I asked Emma to copy his data because our yeah, that's fine. data we did was not that. No, this data looks okay. So basically, something has. I don't know where this one, that one thing is coming from, but there's no number that big. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I don't know why it was gone now. It didn't make sense. Yeah, I don't know why. But, um, that's right. Let's just double check. Yeah. Okay. And again, let's give this guy a title Graph 2. Um, Intensity versus cosine of angle of deviation for two polarizers. I'll zoom out so you can see all that. And again, it's not quite straight. Not quite straight. But again, I forgot to put a line here. So we need to put a line here, right? So I want you guys to put a line for this graph. Why can't I? I don't know, but we're not on page yet. You don't have a line. So let's, let's, you put the, but you bang in. I want you to put the 10. Uh, I think it's about intensity, right? Intensity. No, we want we want the intensity air bars, or we want our cosine theta air bars that we just made. Because the intensity air bars are fine. Why is it so messy there? Because we actually have four different, or sorry, two different dots as you went around. So it's kind of like our trials. It's kind of like our trials. So again, I need to get a good little graph here. And you know what? Let's try this guy. Ooh, a quadratic looks quite nice. There are so many that fit. There are so many that fit. Let's just try another one. I'm curious. If I just chose like some Power. Oops, I'm on the wrong graph now.
Okay, here's the cool thing. This one, I just tried power. I didn't choose quadratic. And you know what power the computer chose? They chose a power of two, which is the quadratic. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay. Right here, AX to the two. Okay, but then what's your B? Then it says B equals, what's your B equals? It says right here, AX to the B, then right underneath, it says B equals. B equals what? No, it doesn't. Which one did you choose? Power? Okay, did you get a nice curve? Yeah. Because I, I have a... I have a straight line down at the bottom for that one. That one didn't too work too well. So you need one that actually works. So if you choose variable power, it works. And they chose two, which is nice. Okay. Now we'll copy and paste this into our lab report. So table two, we would copy data processing here. We're not going to. It's not worth our time. Then we're going to have graph two. Yeah, Atlanta just shook her head. Yeah. Yeah, I went through that and I was in denial. You use the words that I thought, so I'll stick to the pages and get used to it. And then I gave up. Not confident about it, but just walked away. Okay, good. Now we're going to. Okay. Oh, in the new pages, do you have a nice little inline floating button right here? Oh, no, you don't. You lose all those buttons. Arrange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now this. I can't open it. Okay. Well, that matter. Are you Yosemite? Yeah. Oh, poor boy. Okay. Anyways, let's keep on going here. Um, just pop it in. Doesn't matter if it moves up or down. You can make a new document. It doesn't matter. It's the process right now that matters. Okay. This um, graph shows a quadratic relationship between intensity and cosine of the angle. Okay, The exponent in the power relationship is 2, which matches with the quadratic shape, right? Because a quadratic is x squared, right? So we're we're recognizing, we're taking information from the graph ax to the two, and we're reinforcing our knowledge. Hmm. This graph can be straightened or linearized. Linear, uh, linearized. Linear eyes, thank you, Pevin. By graphing, actually, not this graph, we say this data. Oops. This data can be linearized by graphing blank by blank. What can, how can we make this be straight now? Ah, if it's to the power of two, you know what we want to do? power of to it. Whatever it is, that's what we want to do. So you're doing algebra, doing the opposite. We don't want to do the opposite. Whatever it is, that's what we want to do. So by graphing intensity versus what? The square of cosine theta. Insert table three here. We're not actually going to insert the table, but that's what you would do. Should we do it? No, we don't have time. It's not worth our time. We have 13 minutes now. We're going to go back to our numbers table. And we need a new column here. What's the new column going to be? Square. Square or square root? 
no, yeah, square of cos theta. So I want you guys to do some formula. So equals that column, little hat, 2. Oops, I'm going to zoom out to make this easier to fill down. Yeah, so are you squaring the right column? Yeah. So you have to make sure you, make sure you know what column you're squaring. And again, control your decimal places. Let's have 2 again. It's a nice number. So do you guys have the same numbers I have? 1, 0 0.99, 0 0.97. Well, actually, no, you guys have different data. You have the same data. Okay. What are we going to do now with Logger Pro? Put in a new column. New graph and a new column, or a new column for a new graph. So you go back to Logger Pro. Make the graph small. So I, I suggest whatever graph you're working on at the time to make big and... Whatever graph you're not working at the time, make small. I'm going to make a new data, new math column, cos square, oops, that was subscript, superscript, Greek lower theta. That should work. Yeah, good. And again, I'll copy and paste. Didn't we cross um, theta squared? Um, you could do it in brackets, but the notation in math, I'll write it on the board so people can see. Okay. You could write it like that. Okay, but in math, they actually write it, oops, or it goes properly, that's how they actually write it in math, and that's how you'll see it in physics as well. So kind of what we're doing is squaring that, but this is how you write it, because it's not just the theta being squared, that's why you need the brackets, it's the cos of theta being squared. And maybe to save the brackets, they wrote it that way. I don't know. That's just how it is. So I'm going to accept it and move forward. Now we have nine minutes. We need to make a new graph. Hopefully you guys are ahead of me. Ooh, that's not what I want. Again, we have to make the we need to choose what we want from the graph, right? The graph doesn't know what we want. Oops. This isn't so. I better. Do, what happened to the data? Did anybody get this? Because I, I had proper data last time. I got this. I got this. Let me see. Yeah! Uh, okay. So. Was yours linear or is yours like my? Is yours like this yuck? So I'm not sure what happened here. I'll just choose something else and I'll come back to it. No. I think so. Let's try that again. Copy. Maybe I want to put some more decimal places here. It may make a difference.
Okay. Okay, Atlanta, what are your numbers up here? Do the same numbers I have? Yeah. Zero point nine nine. Yeah. Zero point nine seven. Yeah. Zero point eight eight. Zero point eight two. Zero. Yeah. I'm just copying this straight in. Um. Hmm. It's really small. Let's just make sure no errors. Call definition. Uh, but we sh you should get a nice who who got you got a nice straight line, Anvay straight line, straight line Jonas straight line. So I would say to myself or you guys come over here and let me check it out. But unfortunately, mine is the one that's bad. And we have the same numbers in Atlanta. Hmm. No, no, I lost it. No, no, I, I had the straight line last graph. So something. I'm just doing crazy things now just to go away and then hopefully it comes back. But again, this would, this would win by every five degrees. Oh, ha! I didn't copy and paste from the very top. Oh. <laughs> paste. Ah, oh, you see? So it matters where you paste from. Okay. Paste from the very top. Now it's better. Get our straight line. Beautiful. Okay. Wait, is that is that fine? Yes, yeah. How you don't have too many dots there. Well, I'll just get, you should you should get way more dots, yeah, right? Okay, unless your dots happen to be on top of one another. And actually, you no, know, because this one was every five degrees, and you would every ten degrees, so I have twice as many dots as you. So that's okay. Okay. Now, what we saw, we started with intensity and angle right and then we went intensity cos it's not cos properly cos angle so this gave us that shape this gave us that shape so we kept going forwards then we got i proportional to cos squared theta How do we change a proportional to an equal sign? We use constant. Yeah, where do I put the constant? In there. I'm going to put a constant right there. There's the i equals some constant cos squared theta. In this case, I the, the constant is the name i initial cos squared theta. I don't know what it is. I know it's i initial. Ah, uh, that, that's from the formula. But the question I want to ask you is, what is the value of that constant? How do we find the value of that constant using your graph right now? Don't say it if you figure it out. Give you a chance to think. We have two minutes. How do we find the value of that constant using your graph, your straight line graph? Straight line, y equals mx plus c. This cos squared theta is your x, i is your y. So i0 is the slope, the gradient, which is right here. So my, my case is 191.7. Same answer for you? 
Okay, so maybe to pick up, I'm starting to put more numbers in, more decimal places in there, so slightly different, that's okay. Okay, so you get that. Now, what this actually is, this is the initial intensity, and we're going to talk about that next class. Now, the one thing that we didn't do, and I thought we might have time, but we didn't, is we actually could find the uncertainty in co-squared theta. I'll just quickly do that in one second, so I hate to leave you guys in a rush again, and I have to do Mr. McBride's bus duty today. Yeah, what is the 